All right, in the Women's Championship, it's finals weekend. This weekend, it's Dublin against Cork in the big one at four o'clock. Kleena O'Connor is in studio with me. Good afternoon to you, Kleena. Hiya. Uh, so, looking at this game, looking at the markets, Dublin are going to hammer Cork by all accounts. Uh, is this what's going to happen? Well, obviously it's a dub. That's why I'm <laughs> definitely hoping it's going to happen. Um, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be as easy as that, to be honest. Um, I think a lot will depend on how Dublin turn up in the day. A lot will depend on how efficient Cork are. It, it could be... Like, I think it's either going to be really tight or Dublin are going to win well. I don't think we're going to see the other way around. I don't think we're going to see a Cork hammering Dublin. Is that because of a mental thing for Dublin, that if it's tight, if it's in the pressure cooker situation, that they're able to push through? Um, yeah, I, I think I think this team has evolved and uh, the new coaching staff around this team has evolved and brought them to a different level. I think getting a final last year and beating Mayo and, and don't forget, like, um, everyone talks about the Cork Dublin history. There's a lot of history between Mayo and and Dublin as mm. well. Like there, there's quite a distinct rivalry between those two teams. So um, I think their comprehensive victory in last year's final uh, will stand to them. Um, and I also think that they're a lot better prepared. Quite simply, um, I mean, looking back at some of the, the losses we had to Cork previously when I was playing, and when I, even when I wasn't playing, from watching the sidelines, it definitely looked like when the pressure came on the team. Sometimes it seemed like there was an absence of a specific plan. What are we right, going to okay. do? You know, it, it wasn't as simple as oh, just get out there and win the breaking ball. You, you know, that doesn't work if you're two points down and all in final or whatever. You need you need very specific things that you're going to do when these situations arise. And that's definitely not the case with Mick Bohan. We've all seen it with the documentary. It's yeah. one of these r rare scenarios where we know exactly how he operates, how detailed he is and how precise he is in the build-up. He actually said during the week that the A versus B game this week was might have been the toughest uh, fixture for a lot of them this summer. Fair play to him for calling it as it is. The, the thing I read from that is also when you talk about if it's a tight game, Dublin will win, that off the bench they're unbelievably strong because their A versus B games are so, are so tough at the moment. Yeah, well, I think a lot of managers say that anyway. You know, the, sure. oh, this, your training is so tough and everyone's fighting for places and sometimes that isn't actually the case. But I do think another way that this team has evolved, um, if I look back at previous years, we might have had a good, uh, a good 15, maybe a good 17. Sometimes we didn't have a... a, a really depth uh, or great depth on, on the bench uh, just different years being as it was and sometimes people who were on the bench were kind of disillusioned or a little bit disconnected um, I think what uh, Mick and the other coaching staff um, and I know some of them quite well what they've achieved um, all the subs are, and th there is a really good hunger from your, you know, fifteen to twenty-five or sixteen to twenty-five. That, right, okay. that is pushing it on. That that's something that's changed, I think, within the drum setup. Yeah, we w we will talk a little bit more about the evolution and tactically as well uh, in a couple of moments. I just want to say hello to Lisa Crowley. Good morning to you, Lisa. Morning. How are you? Not too bad. Thanks a million for taking the call. So, uh, as I was just saying to Kleena a moment ago, the market is suggesting that this is going to be an easy afternoon for Dublin. I dare say you don't agree with that. Oh, no, I don't think uh, down in Cork that we'd be too inclined to agree with that. Um, I think no doubt they're favourites, and I think, you know, they've really earned that title now. And it's probably unusual for Cork to be going into a All-Ireland all final as underdogs. But I think it actually might suit this um, crop of players coming in. So, no doubt it's going to be a fantastic game of football. Why do you say it's going to suit them? I think, you know, I suppose they've... So many All Irelands accumulated over the last few years, but if you look at this panel, they I think I did a stat during the week there that 13 of them have no All Irelands, while 17 have 67. So I think there's a brilliant mixture of youth and experience there, and I think you know coming in as slight underdogs, I think it suits the younger girls because they know they kind of have nothing to lose going out there on Sunday, and you know like Dublin have really led the charge for the last year or two. So I think they're almost chomping at the bit to just get out there and, you know, see how they fare against, you know, the top team in ladies football at the moment. Yeah. Like, like it, well, to be honest, in some ways, Lisa's right, you know, there there is less pressure on Cork, you know, mm -hmm. because, oh, new players and go out and show what you can do and there's no pressure on you or whatever. I mean, yeah. if, if you look at the Dublin side of things, we won in 2010 against Tyrone. We went out the next year, we couldn't beat Cork. You know, they won last year against Mayo, they're going out this year, can they beat Cork? So, so, do you view that as a big disappointment that you didn't get that job done against Cork? Oh, big time, like yeah. It's, like if that was Cork, say, in 2010, would that have made it a lot more special? Uh, 
it would have changed it a little bit. Yeah, sure. yeah, um, yeah. It is. It is a bit of a niggle for those of us who were involved that that had so many near misses or whatever. So I mean, in some ways, there is more pressure on Dublin. Can they defend? Are they a one-hit wonder again, or can they go out and put two in a row? In terms of this Dublin team, just in terms of uh, the the hoodoo to, that Cork have had over them for so many years, that it's not just a back-to-back for Dublin that's going to change things. It is also the fact that it is Cork. Absolutely, and I think, you know, that's a massive factor for Sunday. You know, when I first saw that it was Dublin and Cork in an honour and final, like, that's what you're thinking about straight away. Like, Dublin have played Cork now, I think, in four honour and finals since 09. You know, and they lost three of them by one point. They lost another by two. And, you know, like, a lot of the time they were in the driving seat in those games. So I think... This will be the telling sign, like, are Dublin a great team or, you know, were they a flash in the pan? Like, can they beat Cork on Sunday? And I think that's going to be massive, like. It, it's actually, I think you're right in terms of it It will be, a, a, it signify a change in the Dublin team if they, if they can put back-to-back back together. And I was thinking back to some of those other matches we played against Cork that often we were in the driving seats that we would have, mm-hmm. we'd start really well um, and we'd get a, get ahead and everything would be looking great. But when you look back on it, often in the first half, Cork were missing. They were missing shots. And I, rem- I remember standing in Crow Park and thinking, Jesus, they've, they've hit five wides now, you know, and we're the 10 minutes in the game. But... Fast forward then to the last 10 minutes, the really important 10 minutes, and they rarely missed. And I was thinking about the Cork uh, semi-final against Mayo last year. There's no doubt, no doubt whatsoever that this Cork team will keep attacking, keep attacking. They they will not give up, we know that. But last year against Mayo in the semi-final, they kept attacking, kept attacking, kept attacking, but it was execution. There there was one stage where someone had like an open goal and, and missed it and a few... And maybe that's the difference, maybe because five or six years ago you had exceptional players who under pressure would execute in the last five minutes of the game when they were it was a level game they'd put it over the bar and maybe that is where this current crop of players just has to evolve they maybe don't have that execution under pressure yet there's no doubt about it they'll keep going yeah. but they've got that culture with them that never say die thing but it'll be execution under pressure and that's why I think that maybe if it's a tight game that might stand in Dublin's favour. Yeah, the thing also ha- helps that helps Dublin hugely in this regard is just the volume of the shooters that they have, the mix of scores that they've that they've gotten, they've shown all season. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely. Uh, again, their forward line has has greatly improved. I think just the number of people who are putting scores on the board, which is always a great sign. Whereas previously we might have been relying on Sinead Hearn or Lindsay Davy or whatever, but now there's there's much more people who are bringing more more uh, attacking threat to the table, really. Well, like, Sinead, of course, is still flying this, this yeah. summer, obviously, as well. It was a 2-4 in the semi-final, was it? Yeah, yeah. Um, like, that's the thing when you look at Cork, and, like, in the context of the semi-final, Lisa, and I know a lot of us will read a lot into the semi-final because it was on TV, we saw the full match and stuff like that. Yeah. I, I do wonder, the way Donegal set up that day, it was, like, to, it was almost reminiscent of Jim McGuinness. It was a blanket defence. Yeah. It was, I think they played three forwards that day, the day Donegal in the mm-hmm. end, and Cork had to figure their way around this mass defence in quite a defensive setup. And ultimately, no matter what you planned for, no matter what you're doing in training, coming up against that Donegal defence was not something that Cork were too used to this season, and they managed to figure that out. Does that give you hope in terms of figuring this Dublin defence out? Absolutely. I think, you know, Donegal was a strange game. It was very frustrating to watch from the sideline because you probably. You felt that Donegal were going out to not lose as opposed to win. And, mm. like, to be fair to them, they absolutely frustrated the Cork forwards. But as you said, like, we did get a lot of confidence from the fact that Cork were able, you know, they were patient on the ball. They found holes when they needed to, like, they got into those two goals. And I think, you know, it was probably the first real test they've had this summer. And I think especially their back line have come under a little bit of scrutiny. And, you know, they really stood up. Now, I know... Donegal only played two or three forwards, but still the calibre of those forwards are exceptional. And I think the likes of Roaching feeling at full back, they're going to take massive confidence coming into the game on Sunday. And I think, you know, they're going to expect that Dublin, I think Cork and Dublin are quite similar in that they both like to attack. So I think, you know, they're going to be very prepared for that. And they know that it's, I think it's going to be an open game of football. Um, but I think hopefully they will have taken a lot of confidence from the Donegal game, even though Sunday will definitely be a lot different setup. Lisa, if I, like, do you do you think that they've been tested? You know, do you think that Donegal was that big of a test? I mean, I think I think you're right. It was. Yeah. They were kind of stuck it out and were patient and did what they needed to do to win the game. But like, I don't personally think Dublin have been tested 
that much mm-hmm. so far this year. And, and, and I'd maybe suggest the same about Cork, but I don't, I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. I'd agree with you. Like, probably the Munster Championship, um, like, they played Tipperary. They were a little bit nervous, but they were never under any doubt they were going to lose that game. And it's kind of been the same way all the way through. I think in terms of the semi-finals, absolutely. I don't think Dublin have been tested at all this year. I think Cork got a little bit more of a test off Donegal. But ultimately, I think, you know, they never looked like losing that game. Um, So, you know, it's hard to know. I think Cork and Dublin have just kind of been so front of the pack this year. So I don't think either have really been tested. So it's hard to know how Cork will fare against this Dublin side because, you know, Cork are a little bit... We, you know, there's a couple of new players in there. It's a little bit of a different setup, whereas Dublin are far more established over the last few years. Yeah, yeah, I think I think they are. They've, they've grown a little bit more after the last mm. two or three years. But I definitely think, like the, a, a bit like what you're saying about the the court game against Tony Gall, like watching the Dublin Galway game, like I just didn't think. Dublin were ever going to lose it after no. about five minutes, you know. Absolutely um, not, no. It just wasn't, it wasn't a, a decent test for them. It is the one trend, I think, this year, though, from Dublin, and this is very much clutching to straws, where they had a lead at half time and the opposition won the second half. And I know that's such a yeah. cliche when you're in at half time and you're yeah. seven points out, it's like, get out there and win the second half. But, like, say, the Kerry game, they absolutely slaughtered them in the second half. Like, they, yeah. uh, like, they completely enhanced their lead. Like, wh- while I have you bought on the line, it'd be stupid not to ask about the goalkeeping situation. Uh, Kira Trans, Kleena, how important has she been to Dublin? this season when you mentioned the evolution at the start do you talk about her evolution this year has she been a much more potent part of the, the game plan yeah I think so I mean um, when I was sort of finishing up with, with Dublin Kira was sort of coming onto the scene and it just I think she's just become a much better goalkeeper uh, over the, the last two or three years she's become way more confident she's um She's kind of commanding her defence. I mean, you're talking about cliches. That's, that's, to me, that's a massive job of the goalkeeper. It's 70% of it. You know, are you managing what's happening in front of you really well? And are kickouts uh, are going better than they've gone before? You know, so I think it's just, I suppose, growing into the position and making it her own. Um, and I, I just think as a as a Dublin player off the pitch even and on the pitch, what she delivers on the pitch, she's just really grown into a leader in the team. So that's got to settle settle the back line down. Lisa, how important is it to stop trans at the weekend? Yeah, I think absolutely like she's been phenomenal over the last couple of years. Um like they're you know, it's very rare you see her make any mistakes and you know that's a sign of a good goalkeeper when they're not really making any headlines. Um I think Cork will probably have a plan for her kick out, so I don't know. But I think they'll have to because you know, she sets up so much of that Dublin attack. Like, they they move that ball f- at a ferocious pace from back to front. And I think that's going to be key for Cork to try and stunt that through the middle. And I think, you know, that has to start with Trent. You know, she can't be kicking out a ball very easy, just handing them possession. So I think that's going to be probably crucial to Cork trying to win. They have to try and stunt her kickouts. And, like, in fairness, I think actually that's something that Cork potentially are very, very good at. Mm-hmm. Uh, just going on personal experience, that's something that they were able to do to us. In those sort of second half periods uh, when they were coming back on the attack, they really attacked our kick out and it at times really unsettled us. So they have enough players who've been around and who know how to do that and who know how to go after that type of a, uh, a setup. So I, th- I think if Dublin can manage that and not fall victim to that, it would be a massive a step for them in, in terms of winning the game. Yeah, and, and a massive step for Cork if they manage to yeah, succeed definitely. in stopping that. Is there anything else? Uh, is that the most important thing, Lisa? Or is there another thing that is the single most important thing for Cork to get right on Sunday to have a chance of actually beating this Dublin team? Well, I think... Um, a good start is important for Cork because I think predominantly, like a little bit like Dublin, they've kind of been a second half team and I would put that down maybe to a little bit of nerves. Like they're a young team, so sometimes they can play in patches. So I think like we saw what Dublin did to Galway a couple of weeks ago. After 15 minutes, that game was over and I think Galway were a little bit nervous and Dublin just straight away went at them. So I think that's going to be very important. And as I was saying earlier, I think... Dublin's running game is just phenomenal. Like, I think Cork are going to have to stick with with the runners. You know, like the Dublin forwards come in like an express train off the shoulder, and I think Cork kind of failed to do that when they met in the league and it opened them up. So I think no doubt there's going to be goals on Sunday, but I think you know sticking with the runners um, is going to be very important for Cork to try and keep with keep in the game and not just let it be a free for all in the back line.
Yeah, but I get the sense that uh, you reckon they've got one hell of a chance on Sunday. I'm not going to ask for predictions because uh, we can probably guess who you're both going for. Just one final thing, instead of a prediction and Kleena, like in terms of a potential dynasty, and I know it's just they've just done one in a row, but like Jesus, we, 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 lo- we love to get carried away when it comes to <laughs> yeah, sport. It's, it's, it's what we do best. Yeah, like, yeah. how reminiscent is this Dublin team of that great Cork team back in their very early days? Do they have the sort of distance between the rest like that Cork team did in the early days? Um, it's it's very hard to to make that comparison straight away. Sure. I mean, uh, like what that what that Cork team had, I suppose, was just sustainability, and it was all over the pitch, and it was year after year, and they just grew and grew and grew, um, and they had consistency, massive, massive consistency with manager, consistency with players. I don't know, like, there's no doubt about it. Mick Bowen and the management team around him have have done an incredible job, and they've changed a lot of our problems that we had or they've addressed a lot of our problems that we had um, like we were doing a lot of things right but they, they've kind of tr- the things that were holding us back they've managed to address them so a lot of it will depend on I think what happens from a coaching side there's no doubt about it, these young players have talent they have ability they have all of those sort of things they have hunger they're carrying themselves well off the pitch they're not getting too carried away off the pitch so I think it is can whatever environment that has been created can that be kept going or Will a new manager come in next year or the year after and then starting again? Well, that, that's a big question of Bowen. Obviously, himself yeah. has been linked to a couple of jobs, but that's a story for another day. We may not be talking about it at all, Lisa. You've got plenty of dressing room wall material there, anyway, plenty of things, plenty of motivation there from a Cork Absolutely, supporter. Yeah. Uh, you've been written off left, right, and centre, yeah. certainly for me. I'll, I'll put my hands up there. Thanks a million for taking the call, Lisa. No bother. Thanks a million. Uh, just w- one last uh, very quick question. 46,000 was the attendance last year. It's such a thing that's attached with these finals, what yeah. the attendance is. Yeah. Can it be matched on Sunday? Uh, I think so. I think with the with because Dublin are in the final, just because of the proximity of the fans, it can be matched. And I think ladies football, it's getting better. I think the Cork Dublin saga will draw a bit of attention. So I don't see why not. Like you know. Yeah, let's hope so. Kina, thanks a million for your time. Appreciate it.